Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That, um, again, like the last couple of studies we've had, is one of my favorite Bible verses um, for a particular reason. And it is because of a missions trip that I got a chance to go on uh, in 2019 to Honduras. Uh, it was on that trip that I met uh, Pastor Ivis and his family. Uh, pastor Ivis was a um, pastor from Nicaragua, uh, Matthew Fallon and Acts 1-8 uh, mission group usually would go to Nicaragua, but for whatever reason, I don't really uh, know the reason, but for whatever reason that year, uh, they ended up going to Honduras instead. And the pastor and his family came up and met us there. And that Bible verse has stuck with me because uh, one night we were sitting outside after we had done the things of the day and we were just talking and, and, and talking about the Bible and different things. And he referenced that scripture. And he referenced the fact that that's, that's Jesus's command. That's written in red letters. That's his words. And it starts with the word go. And um, his thing was, that's what we're called to do is to go out to others and share the gospel, not to sit and wait for them to come to us. And that's where my idea came for the, the title of what I put together, the Go Missions, uh, was from what Pastor Ivis talked about, about going out. Uh, into the world, going out to where the lost are, where, because it's easy uh, to be the Christian and to be the witness and to, to worship and do all these things inside the four walls of the church. Uh, but we're called as disciples of the gospel, uh, ambassadors for God, to go out. Uh, the Bible says to go out in the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Uh, so that is our calling, is to go, not wait for them to come to us. Okay, I started straight with the scripture, and, and you might think, well, why? Well, I've been reading a book, and this one part toward the end stuck with me, and it's a little over a page. I'm going to read uh, just straight from this book. Uh, if you want to know the book, you can ask me later. Um, but it's a, it's a good, well-written book, but it, it, it stuck out to me, and it brought this memory um, of our trip to Honduras back in that, that particular verse and the sitting out and having the conversation with uh, Pastor Ivis and just reading the book, it says there's a lot of talk these days about the drop off in church attendance. The news outlets point to the decline in church growth. The implication, God must be dead. People are leaving, they say. And so the message of the church must be irrelevant for modern America. And you know, the saddest part, we're the ones who've taught the world that the church is irrelevant. Outside of the Sunday church services, are our lives all that different? Some studies show that 80% of Christians between the ages of 18 and 29 have premarital sex. By some estimates, Christians account for more than 50% of abortions in America. Some reports show that 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women are addicted to pornography. The difference in divorce rates between Christians and non-Christians is negligible. And look around you. Think American Christians are just as Look around you. Think American Christians are just as greedy, arrogant, and insolent as the rest of the world? You bet we are. I've identified the problem, see, and the problem is us. And he's talking about the church. Over the last 50 years, the American church has been a dismal failure. Instead of trying to carry the truth of the Almighty out to the world, instead of sharing his love, we've created comfortable Christian communities where our faith is rarely tested. We gather together in multi-million dollar facilities with comfortable stadium seating, concert-worthy sound systems, and laser light shows. We create experiences that are supposed to be relevant rock shows that sound just like the music of the world. And as we've retreated to these places, these experiences, we've withdrawn from government, allowed our faith to be squeezed out of public schools, let our voices be silenced in the workplace. See, 
Under pressure of the advancing secular age, we retreated to our church buildings as society around us descended into godly chaos. And that struck a chord with me and with this verse because uh, here in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus was given his final command on earth before his ascension uh, to his uh, disciples. And it was simple. It was go out. Don't sit here and wait. You, here's the gospel. You've seen it firsthand. You've seen, uh, you've been through my, seen my ministry. You've seen my crucifixion. You've seen my resurrection. Here's the gospel. This is what's going to save uh, mankind from eternal damnation in hell. Uh, and they had a choice. They could just, he ascends, they sit there and do nothing. Uh, they could sit there and wait on people to come ask them about it or they could go out and spread the gospel. And that's what Jesus was telling them to do is go spread the gospel. And I agree with, with the book here is that's where we as a church have greatly failed. Uh, we as a church are comfortable going and spending our two hours on Sunday within the church walls. It's easy to worship God inside the four walls of the church. It's easy to testify with inside inside the four walls of the church. It's easy to um, tell what God's done for you, to, to, to do all these great things. And, and, and that's wonderful. That's where we worship God is inside the four walls of the church, but we do the work for God outside the four walls of the church. And if we want to see our nation um, on the right track, if we want to see our schools, how many uh, shootings have we seen just in the recent months in in school systems or in workplaces or or just in general uh we see all these evil things that that sin has brought about in our world and we want things to improve but we the church also want to sit on our hands on a church pew and not go out and be the light but the, the bible tells us jesus tells us to be salt and light but we are comfortable, and that goes along with, with the title of this little video series that we're, we're doing outside the comfort zone. We, we've got comfortable inside the church when God's command is not for us to sit inside the church. It's to go out, to go out to where the drug addict that needs to hear the gospel is, to go out to where the homeless that needs the gospel is, who needs the help, who needs the church. Uh, to go out in the byways and the highways and the shrubs and the bushes and the places that nobody else wants to go and help people and tell them that there is good news, that there is hope. Uh, our world looks for hope, but it's looking in all the wrong places, which brings me to another verse that, that popped out to me that anybody that goes to church with me or has heard me preach or, or teach has probably heard this verse come out of my mouth many a times. It's another one of my favorite verses I'm going to share. Uh, and, and it goes to the what happens, what, what is the church doing? What are we accomplishing uh, by sitting inside the four walls of the church and not going out and, and spreading the gospel? And it's uh, Paul writing in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. We're, we're, we're in church. I mean, we're we're expected to be we we have an expectation when we go into church of what the christian looks like or what christian worship looks like or we we pretty much know who's going to sing a song we pretty much know who will testify who says prayer out loud in church we know all this we're, we're conditioned to feel comfortable in that zone uh, but if we're not sharing the gospel in the world if we're hiding our gospel who are we hiding it from the ones that need it and and we're doing a disservice to them we're, we're, we're not helping them but we're, we're not obeying Jesus command go ye therefore into all nations go to the ones who don't look like you go to the ones who don't think like you go to the ones who who are polar opposites uh, of you that's God's, that's Jesus's words. That's his command for us as the church to do. And that's our calling. That's our duty. That's not just the pastor to go out and invite people to church or spread the gospel. It's not up to just the deacons or the son. That's 
every one of us that's been saved by the grace of God have that. We have a testimony to share. We have what God's done for us, what God's brought us from. And my testimony might not touch somebody that your testimony might touch. Your testimony might not touch somebody that my testimony might not touch, might touch. But the point is, if we're just sitting on our testimony and not using it and not sharing it and not spreading it to those who need to see that hope, who need that light, who need that salt, what good are we doing for the kingdom of God? And then that goes on to one more verse. And this one's going to be short today. Uh, but in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 17, this, this is the scary part. What do we do if we don't? If, if we're just going to sit in our comfort zone, Peter told them, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. How can we expect others, how can we expect to see the lost do better? Um, how can we expect our nation to be better? How can we expect our school system to be better? How can we expect our work environment to be better if we What's it say? The, the, the house of God, if we aren't moving first, judgment starts with us. We can't hold government and schools to this high standard if we're not even meeting that standard and willing to do what we want them to do. Okay. So it says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begins at, a, at first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Um, Peter pretty much summed that up, but well, it's got to start with us. And if not now, when? Okay, if not who, if not us, who? If we're not going to share the gospel, Paul said, if the gospel's hid, it's hid to those that are lost. Jesus said, go to all the nations. Um, Peter said, it starts at the house of God. If not us, who? Who's going to share it? Okay. If not now, when? Uh, we, we've procrastinated and procrastinated and we've let the world, the world, the devil is not procrastinating. The devil is, as it says in the Bible, he's like a roaring lion looking for those who he can devour and destroy. He doesn't want you. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care one iota for you. He just wants to tear apart, destroy, wreak havoc uh, in the world, in the church, in the family in the school, in the nation, in the government. You can see it. We took God out of the school. Look at our schools. We've took the Ten Commandments can't even be in the, in, in the court system. And the courts founding fathers based our laws from these principles. And we took God out of it. And we took God out of this. And we took God out of that. We don't pray before the football game because uh, somebody might be offended. The word is going to offend. It's it's going to better yet convict. But if we're not sharing it, how can it convict? Uh, the Bible says if there if there's no preacher to preach the word, how's the word going to get out there? And that's where we are right now in this day and time. We're in our comfort zone. We're comfortable with Sunday morning, maybe a Wednesday night every once in a while, possibly a Sunday night. We might even, if we're feeling froggy, go to a revival one night a week or one night. We, we, let's, let's take that and, and judgment beginning at the house of God. We took our, our revivals and said five days is too long. Let's shrink it down to three days. And then if we're lucky, uh, as the church member of the church having the revival, we'll show up one of the three days. We've taken vacation Bible school where we're spreading the gospel to all these kids. We're sowing seeds hoping that they take it back to their family. And we've took it from five nights to maybe three nights to let's cram it all in in one day and get it over with. That's the mindset the church is taking. The devil's not taking that mindset. He's still seeking. He's still destroying. He's still out roaming, looking for where he can cause confusion, where he can uh, destroy uh, God's people, destroy God's work, because that, that's his ultimate goal. And what are we doing? We're sitting back and watching because we're comfortable where we're at. We're comfortable inside our comfort zone. But it's time to get outside of our comfort zone. That's what we're called to do. And reading as I, as I read through this book, uh, that just brought that back to, to my mind. Um, 
going to Honduras. That was my first and, and unfortunately due to COVID, my only mission trip so far. Hope to have more to come, but uh, that was outside of my comfort zone in a foreign land that spoke a different language, telling about a gospel that a lot of them hadn't heard about. Now, you want to talk about how spoiled we are in America. We, we, we had um, a, a crusade or a revival, whatever you want to call it, in a soccer field, and there was a lady who gave her life to the Lord, and they talked to her afterwards, and she told them, um, they actually gave her a ride back to her house, but she said she had walked three miles to get to that crusade. Somebody had told her it was coming. So somebody had to step out and say, hey, this is going to happen. She was looking for something. She was willing to walk three miles. We're not willing to drive across the street to go to a church service. We're spoiled inside our church comfort zone. We're spoiled inside our American comfort zone. All these different comforts of the modern world while the devil is just tearing us apart from the inside out he's tearing the family apart he's tearing the church apart he's tearing the the, the community apart he's tearing the the state apart the nation apart he starts at the bottom and works his way up and before you know it it's all just one big garbled mess and we as the church are sitting back and watching it happen we want to see the change but we don't want to be the change Jesus told us to be the change. Jesus told us to be different. Jesus told us to be the light. Don't hide the light under a bushel. Uh, be the city on the hill with a bright light that's, that's pointing to the hope that is in Christ and his work on the cross. But are we doing our part? So that has personally reawakened a call within me and, and, and the, the, the onus is on each one of us uh, to examine our own heart and our life. Um, we not, let, let's get outside of the church as a whole and the church, we're, we're a temple, the spirit lives within us. So it starts not with new beginning where I go or wherever you go or, or the, the first Baptist or the first Methodist or the whatever this or that or the FCM. It starts with me and then my family and then those around me that I have influence with, then my church. Then it's the church spreads to the community, the community to the town, the town to the state, and it works up, but we're just keeping it all contained to ourself. We're failing to meet the great command that Jesus gave the disciples before his ascension. And that's rejuvenated me reading this book uh, that I've read, um, has, has rekindled the fire to get out there and tell others. I've read in the book, the, 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 the author talks about different things that he's been through and people he spoke to. And it, it, it excites me and I want to be that person who, who randomly brings up the gospel to somebody in Walmart because we don't know, do they know the gospel one? Uh, we don't know what they've been through. We don't know what they're going through, maybe even that day. And what our words and our hope and our faith can do for others because we're keeping it all contained within our one little comfort zone. So I want to invite you to also examine yourself while I examine myself because I'm, I'm no less guilty than anyone else and uh, see how I can expand and get outside of my comfort zone and be more of a uh, faithful disciple of the word and share it with a lost and dying world. So that's all I've got for this episode, Bible study section, devotional, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have some things lined up, hopefully a testimony and hopefully a Bible study uh, led by somebody other than me because the two or three people that watch this probably get tired of hearing me talk. Um, but we got some exciting things. I hope to do more uh, and get out more and spread more and just start a fire. Uh, if it just starts in Atala, Alabama or Reese City or Sardis or wh wherever and just grows uh, and see exciting things happen uh, for the kingdom of God. So we'll see you uh, next go around.